That's a spicy uh, Wednesday morning. Uh, so today I want to talk about the uh, Seiko Amura. So far, it saved me about $10,000. This is a pugnacious, defiant little watch. Little, little on my 8-inch uh, wrist, 44 millimeters. It's very pugnacious. It doesn't like me to share wrist time with other watches. It has a lot of personality. This watch is saving so much money. Uh, here's what I mean. There is a... Um, a Seiko 42mm MM200 GMT looks amazing. I won't buy it because the humor says, why would you wear that when you can wear me? Uh, there is an SLA uh, blue dial titanium Seiko. It's like a Landmaster situation. I like it, but then the humor says, why would you wear that when you could wear me? And they're like, I can't even get a Tudor Black Bay because why would I wear that when I can wear this? So, gosh, I've been... This watch has been in defiance. It's blocked so many temptation purchases. I think the Seiko Amura has saved me just tens of thousands of dollars. Don't you just love my watch math logic? Isn't it logical? Yeah, I don't think so. So, uh... I wanted to share with you the, that the uh, the Amura is is playing a good role for me. It's 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 a good companion, saving me money. And uh, today I, I want to talk about something that that I've been dealing with with my class. There is a writer that I like a lot. I still like him a lot. I listen to his podcast. His name is Derek Thompson. Uh, he writes for the Atlantic. However, every time I teach him in my class. I end up disagreeing with him, and I end up shredding his essays apart, and my students love it, and my students can't stand his essays. So uh, I'll give you uh, two examples. It's kind of a contradiction, because I'm, I'm talking about a, uh, a writer and a speaker, a public intellectual that I admire. So he he does a lot of essays on this idea called workism workism is when you have this job and it's so amazing this job that it just sucks you in it takes all your time and energy and it takes you away from your friends your family you worship your work workism it's this idea that you're substituting uh, meaning that you're not finding in your quote real life and you're you're finding it in at the job and I was talking to my students about this. I go, that's not a thing. That's, that's very minuscule. That's too minuscule. It's not scaled. Most of us don't have jobs like that. And my students were agreeing with me. I said, I said most of us have jobs because we have to pay bills, man. Life costs money. Like Probably like 1% of people have these so-called, I don't know what to call them, dream jobs or or uh, life-consuming jobs that define who they are. That's a, most of us, we have to, we have to make money. That, that, that's a very esoteric, that's a very sm small point. There may be a few people in the tech industry who fit Derek Thompson's uh, de definition, but there's not this thing, you know, work, oh no, there's this thing uh, taking over the land called workism. And it, it's a real poignant commentary on the lack of meaning in real life. Well, you know what, man? Since the beginning of time, there's always been the struggle for meaning and, and you know, people getting lost in bread and circus, you know, cheap entertainment and junk food and filling the mind with cheap entertainment. There's nothing new about a crisis in meaning. I think when in this new world of online publication, I think clickbait, just unconsciously pushes us towards sensationalism. Speaking of sensationalism, ooh, my students kicked me in the butt. I'm so glad I had an alternative essay assignment for them. So I gave them another Derek Thompson essay, which is one called How Anxiety Became Content. And Derek Thompson is writing about these young kids who are going on TikTok and they're doing a lot of self-diagnosis. You know, all these amateur uh, therapists are on TikTok saying, you have this condition, you have this affliction, you have that affliction. And people are diagnosing themselves with depression, bipolar, ADHD, blah, 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 blah. And my students were like, here's my student's attitude about this. Yeah, so what? That's stupid. None of my students do that. 
And so what Derek Thompson did is he took these outliers, these extreme cases of people, you know, losing their minds on the internet and, you know, going on TikTok. By the way, I can't go on TikTok. I don't have it even on my, uh, I uninstalled it. I tried it. It was like uh, putting my brain in a blender. My brain was turning into a smoothie. Not comfortable, not, not appealing. But my students said, we don't do that. That's stupid. And so what Derek Thompson did is he took these extreme behaviors, kind of like in workism, and he tried to paint it as this thing that's overtaking society. Eh, it's more of a clickbait move, Derek Thompson. I'm sorry. I love you, man. I love, your, I love the ideas. I thought it was funny. The idea of people just, you know, navel gazing all day and night, and uh, and uh, and diagnosing themselves with all these afflictions. You know what I told my students? Derek Thompson is so wrong here. I mean, when you're young, you're supposed to be stupid. Being stupid is on your job description when you're young. I was young before social media, before TikTok. I was, of course, I was stupid. Being stupid, and, and I kind of wanted to title my uh, video this, being stupid is on your job description of being young. And my students agreed with me. There's nothing remarkable about being young and stupid. It's just part of the deal. So, I don't know. I love Derek Thompson. I always learn so much when I listen to his podcast. And his ideas are thought-provoking. And, and I love the way he writes. But man, some of these uh, so-called problems, some of these so-called societal problems, they're not as pervasive as he, as he drums them up to be. And so sometimes I, I think it's a clickbait, uh, the, clit, the clickbait factor. All right, so uh, because that assignment failed, I'm looking for a new assignment, and I'm obsessed with a, a documentary about Ronnie Coleman called The King. You know, my students... Even the non-bodybuilder students, I do have a few non-bodybuilder students, they, they love Ronnie Coleman. They love his personality. <clears throat> There's a documentary, I think it used to be on Netflix, now it's on Amazon Prime, Ronnie Coleman, the King. And uh, what, what, what's amazing about, and he's not even my favorite bodybuilder of all time. I'm more into the Arnold, Sergio era. But, I mean, I, Ronnie Coleman is the greatest of his era. But, you know, we love his personality. We love his work ethic. And, and the theme I'm, I'm looking for, maybe you could help me out here, I'm looking for a companion movie or a companion documentary. Ronnie Coleman punished his body, and his quest for greatness made him sacrifice himself. And, and so the question I want to ask, and I need a companion uh, documentary for this, Is the quest for greatness intrinsically going to also destroy us at the same time? Should have Ronnie Coleman taken his foot off the gas pedal a little bit? Could have he been just as great and then saved his body, all those back uh, surgeries? I'm looking for a documentary about a champion. Doesn't even have to be in sports. Could be some other realm of greatness. Could be musicianship, art. I don't know. But some this whole idea that greatness and self-destruction are intrinsic intrinsic I know here in the in the self-help uh, world of social media we're all into uh, you know self-improvement and the aspirational self but maybe it's it's more messy than that maybe Ronnie Coleman is complicating that that idea of the aspirational self uh, because he he really has gone through some excruciating pain and he has a great personality he's a he's a type of guy you're rooting for him you want him to do well all right, that's all I got today, ladies and gentlemen. The Amura will not let me buy any watches right now. It's a pugnacious little stinker. Let me know if you have any documentaries in mind. All right, until next time, I'm out.